Oh, let me get my fat belly back. I gotta push this chair farther and farther out from the wall to get my fat belly in to do a chronicle of the collapse here. It is a, uh, it is a gray, blissfully rainy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on, uh, who's that? Bear. Is it a bear? bear. Is it a bear? What was that about? A little, there's no room for the little dog between my death by chocolate ice cream and my gallon of milk. Taking a break from my organic gardening duties here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Here at uh, about an hour before dinner, enjoying some death by chocolate ice cream. Man. Oh yes, it is uh, Wednesday, May 26, 2021. And for those of you in upstate New York, Topps Supermarket, two for one on the Death by Chocolate ice cream. Uh, three bucks for the cup of ice cream. Mmm, man. But of course I do have the 2% milk. I am on a diet. Some of you know that I am on a diet. So I'm drinking the diet milk. Ah, so anyway, now that the rains have hit and I have been driven inside from my organic garden, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to check in. We haven't checked in with my old buddy Robert Hunziker from over there at Counterpunch, from those little lefties over there at Counterpunch. See what Robert was up to this week. He was he was talking about the Doomsday Clock. Uh, so I guess the Doomsday Clock. They're leaving it at 100 seconds to midnight for another year. Uh, so nothing changing uh, with the doomsday clock. But while I was scrolling around looking for what was on the mind of Robert, came across this story here in Counterpunch. titled, Corona Panic Pounds Have Added to U.S. Obesity, So Has Size Inflation. And I, I thought this was going to be another article about how the number one uh, <clears throat> pre-existing condition for getting Corona Panic was being a fat slob, but never really talks about that. But what are they talking about here? Corona panic pounds have added to U.S. obesity, so has size inflation. I have never heard the term size inflation. So you can decide what this story And counterpunch has to do about the collapse of humanity and the planet. I'm going to let you draw your own dots. Uh, I'm just going to read this article while I guzzle some of my diet 2% milk to wash down my death by chocolate ice cream. Many health experts have noticed that the more diet foods people eat, or in this case drink, the fatter they are actually getting. Why? Because they are still psychologically hooked on eating 
all day, which is fine with big food. In fact, that is the big food agenda. The big food agenda to get people to eat all day, to break out a tub of death by chocolate ice cream and washing it down with some diet milk. <clears throat> the pronouncements of health officials preceded the corona panic during which over one half of U.S. adults gained weight, according to an American Psychological Association poll, two out of five Americans gained an average of 29 pounds over the last year, while 10% gained more than 50 pounds. And I think I've reported on this study. Uh, somewhere in cyberspace. Okay, but we're going to look at the, quote, bigger picture, yes. Okay, according to the New York Times, <clears throat> the average American man before corona panic, this, this was, these figures were gathered <coughs> before the 29 to 50 pounds added to these numbers in the past year. Um, before the corona panic began, the average American man weighed 194 pounds. I weigh 163, by the way. The average American man weighed 194 pounds, and the average American woman weighed an astounding, an astounding 165 pounds. In the years 1976 through 1980, those figures were 172 pounds for men and 144 pounds for women, respectfully. So since 1980, Men in this country have gained an average of 22 pounds and women 21 pounds since 1980. Nor are pounds the only sign of the growing American adiposity. I love that word. The growing American adiposity. Yeah term, the technical term for blubber is adipose tissue. The American adiposity, we're adding to the American adiposity here. Mm, man. Nor are pounds the only sign of the growing American adiposity, the average American woman in the 1950s had, what do you think? The average American woman's waist was in the June Cleaver days, how about 25 inches in the 1950s? The same woman today has a waist of 34 inches Maybe that should be W-A-I-S-T. I, uh, I don't really understand that sentence. Maybe that should be waste. I think they meant to say maybe that should be W-A-S-T-E, but they just respelled W-A-I-S-T. Counter plants, they're kind of a low budget operation. I heard from one of our own tribes members who writes for Counter Punch. Counter Punch does not pay. Nothing is what he taught me. That, that the, the writers get paid nothing on Counter Punch. You know, Counter Punch is 
the you know the one of these lefties uh, defenders of the worker and uh, always talking about you, you know <clears throat> bitching about Jeff Bezos not paying their workers enough. So I guess the copy editors work for nothing at Counterpunch also. But anyway, that's kind of beside the point. All right, back to the story. As people have gotten fatter, so have stadium seats, airplane seats, ambulances, and even operating tables. Few notice because the effects are everywhere. Young people who used to be primarily thinner than older people are now leading the obesity way. Yes, yeah, says Cancer Research UK, children now often outweigh their parents. And I have seen evidence of this um, where the kids, I'm not going to, 10-year-olds, um, fatter than their parents. You know, did their parents just buying their 10-year-old tubs of death by chocolate ice cream? Do your own math. Right. What is this about size inflation? Or a term for the, uh, the collapse. <clears throat> Size inflation enables obesity. It is often said that Marilyn Monroe wore a size 14 dress, a fact that is supposed to show that being plump used to be more acceptable than it is today. But it is just the opposite. Marilyn Monroe rarely weighed as much as 120 pounds and usually weighed between 115 and 118. Moreover, she had a 22 inch waist, which was two to three inches less than women in the 1950s and 12 inches less than the average woman today. And she had 35 inch hips. Yes, the waist of today's women is the size of what their hips used to be. And um, the, what they're talking about is a size 14. It took me a while to figure this out until I read a little farther. A size 14 dress in the 1950s was a much smaller dress than a size 14 dress in, in 2021. They just, you know, they just adjusted the, the, the size on the tag of the dress to meet the adiposity epidemic. <clears throat> Not surprisingly, our growing girth is a big problem for the fashion industry because overweight people do not rush to buy clothes or take pleasure in wearing them, nor do they appreciate size labels that make them feel fat. Years ago, shoe stores were said to leave the size off women's shoes for the same reason. Enter size inflation sometimes called vanity sizing with its fabricated denominations like size zero. Yeah, so what is the definition of a size zero in the year 2021? <laughs> okay, since size zero is now said to fit women who measure from 30, 22, 32 to 33, 25, 35 inches. Uh, so you can be, whether you have a 22 inch waist or a 25 inch waist, 
you are a size zero, uh, according to this. But a little look at fashion history shows that those dimensions used to describe a size five. More shockingly, in the 1970s, those dimensions, you know, 33, 25, 35, now a size zero in the 1970s would have been a size 10. Okay? Uh, they're the only thing, you know, uh, <laughs> this is, I had never considered uh, this uh, classic bit of marketing. Um, <laughs> Now this, of course, this is you know, mostly talking about women. If anyone has a doubt about how size inflation has made people thinner without losing a pound, go to a resale shop and try on, try on a quote size seven from decades ago. Prepare to be demoralized. Men don't scour resale shops the way women tend to do, but if they did, they would likely be just as demoralized if they tried to try on the three-piece powder blue disco suit, similar to the one John Travolta wore in Saturday Night Fever. Can a vest be left casually unbuttoned? Ma'am, death by chocolate. Something's got to kill you. Might as well be death by chocolate. Baggy hip hop fashions, low riding pants that sit on the hips, and stretchy yoga pants and leggings are also indicted as enabling Americans to balloon in size without realizing it because their clothes still fit. Once upon a time, our ancestors called elastic waistbands the devil's playground for exactly that reason. <clears throat> so beware the big food agenda. I need to watch this. A chilling documentary released a few years ago titled Fed Up. I need to watch Fed Up, narrated by Katie Couric, highlighted how the U.S. government capitulates to big food lobbies such as the sugar industry. Yes, the sugar industry. Where would we be without the sugar industry? Don't forget the dairy industry. Uh, <clears throat> where were we? Uh, took the sugar industry and followed the documentary, followed the money involved in keeping people fat. Moreover, labs across the country ensure that junk food is addictive. Mm. Death by chocolate. Finally, big food has launched aggressive campaigns sanctioned by governments to cast obesity as a lack of exercise and not something they, meaning the, the sugar lobby, causes. <clears throat> obesity is not just about aesthetics and there is no such thing as fit but fat. Thank you. There is no such thing as fit but fat. People carrying excess weight are at greater risk of mortality, hypertension, 
high LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. Don't forget type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, sleep apnea, and many cancers. And of course, although it's nowhere mentioned in here, is far and away the number one pre-existing condition for corona panic. I was uh, reporting somewhere uh, about this study, I'm uh, looking at this, they, one of these obesity councils, um, <clears throat> looking at, you know, corona panic rates in countries with, you know, with different obesity rates, and countries with high obesity rates had corona panic death rates uh, 10 times as high as those countries where very few people were obese. But I'm going to leave it there. <clears throat> um, the conditions increase the healthcare costs of fat people and everyone else. No one would smoke cigarettes because it made big tobacco money and kept medical industries thriving. Yet, junk food related obesity does a very similar thing. Moreover, no one is born fat or is naturally fat, though big food certainly does not mind that thinking. <clears throat> As corona panic shutdowns end and people assess the corona panic weight damages and hit the gyms, will we see an improvement in national obesity? not as long as big foods, processed, fattening junk food, and its advertising are everywhere. In fact, obesity may increase as food courts reopen at the mall. Yes, and this was a... <coughs> an essay by Martha Rosenberg, who is an investigative health uh, reporter. She is the author of Born with a Junk Food Deficiency, How Flax, Quacks, and Hacks Pimp the Public Health. Thank you, Martha, for, uh, for pointing that out about America's growing adiposity, but uh, now that I have eaten about half a tub of death by chocolate ice cream and drank about a half gallon of my low-fat milk because I am on a diet, as you guys know. It looks like we have a break in the rain, and maybe I can get back out to my organic garden. Get out there and enjoy your death by chocolate ice cream and your organic garden while you still can. Bye, guys. I can get my fat-ass belly out from behind this table. Ugh. <clears throat>